All right, in this video, I'm going to uh, do the graph of y equals negative cosecant x. But to graph that, I'm actually first going to graph instead just y equals cosecant x. And to actually graph cosecant x, remember the definition of cosecant x is that's 1 over sine x. I'm actually going to graph sine x first. So pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, we'll put a couple units over here as well, negative pi over 2, negative pi, etc. So I'm going to graph sine x first. So remember sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is positive 1, sine of pi is 0, uh, sine of 3 pi over 2 would be negative 1, and then sine of 2 pi we would be back at 0. So there's the graph of sine x. Um, negative pi over 2 we would be at negative 1 and at negative pi we would be back at, ze at 0 and then it would just keep repeating so there's our good old graph y equals sine x now when I graph cosecant okay wherever uh, sine x equals 0 cosecant would be undefined so anywhere uh, sine x has an x-intercept again cosecant would be undefined so at pi, cosecant would be undefined. At 2 pi, cosecant would be undefined. At 0, cosecant would be undefined. At negative pi, uh, cosecant would also be undefined. Any multiple of pi. And now you can kind of plot points, you know. Uh, cosecant of pi over 2, you would get 1 over 1, so they would both go through 1. Um, notice as you go from x equals pi over 2 to x equals pi, sine is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and closer to zero. If you take one and divide it by a number that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and closer to zero, you actually get bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. So uh, cosecant of x actually kind of comes off the top of this function. And again, it's trapped between these vertical asymptotes. So here uh, it would come off the bottom. Here it would come off the bottom. Um, you'd have another little chunk of the cosecant graph over there that we can't really see. Uh, so, so in my blue, uh, the one that's kind of going off to infinity and down to negative infinity, that would be the graph of cosecant x. Well, if we wanted to graph y equals negative cosecant x, remember all that does is that just reflects a graph about the x-axis. So I just need to take my original graph and reflect it about the x-axis. So the asymptotes would still be the same, you know, for example, at pi and at 2 pi. But now instead of being at pi over 2 comma 1, we would be at pi over 2 comma negative 1. And then instead of going up, since it's reflected, it would be going down. Likewise, at 3 pi over 2, instead of being at negative 1, we would be up at positive 1. And again, the same thing. Now it just goes up. And it's just going to, uh, you know, just you can continue this pattern up the rest of the way. So at negative pi, we would have an asymptote. Um, here's negative pi over 2. So instead of being at negative 1 again, we'll be up here at positive 1. And we'll just come off the top. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, again, so kind of the, uh, the line of reasoning. If I can graph sine, I remember this little trick to get the graph of cosecant. And then it's just using my graph, uh, my graph shifting and transformations and reflections. And then I just think, well, that negative out front, again, all that does is just flips the graph about the x-axis.